So if you understand how to add vectors, subtracting is a piece of cake. Let me ask you a question. Um, when you have the math problem, 5 minus 2, what does it really mean? It means you have five apples, and then you take two of them away, right? That's how we typically think about it. But when you get into algebra, you learn that this is basically the same as the following. Subtraction of anything can be written as addition of what? Of adding what? Of adding a negative number. This concept, that subtraction, is really the adding of a negative number. Because uh, when you think about it, if, you, if you're adding something, but what you're adding is actually negative, then it's the same thing as taking it away, right? That concept is basically how we do vector subtraction. So all we have to do if we're going to subtract a vector from another vector is we add vectors, but the thing that we add, we reverse the direction of the thing we're subtracting. That's how we make it negative. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have a vector, and this vector is f1. And let's say that we'd like to subtract a vector and this vector that we're subtracting it as f2. So in order to actually do this subtraction, what we're going to do is change this uh, subtraction into addition. But when we change it to addition, then we have to somehow reverse the vector, just like we reverse the sign of the 2. The way you reverse the direction of uh, the change the sign of a vector is by flipping its direction. Its magnitude stays the same. The length stays the same, but you just put the arrow the other way. So this is going to be the same thing equivalent to if I were to take f1 like this and add to it another vector which is the same exact length as this one but not pointed up, pointed down. This vector is actually not f2, this is vector negative f2. So instead of doing vector subtraction and learning some new technique and some new thing to learn, you never do that. What you do is you just change it to addition, but you flip the sign of this guy, and then when you add these together, that is exactly the same thing as subtracting those vectors. That's how you do it. You never actually do subtraction. You change it to addition, flip the direction of the next guy, arrange things and add them exactly like we always do, and then we get the answer. So let's do it. Let's add these guys together. What we're going to have is we'll have vector f1, which is this one here, and we're going to add to it this vector which is going down like this, and this vector is, uh, you can call it negative f2 or whatever, I guess let's we'll call it negative f2. So whenever I add them together, I do exactly the same thing. I go tail to head like this guy, and this is the answer. This is the resultant vector, which is equal to f1 minus f2. That's what it is. So it's the purple arrow right here. So the answer is... It's a purple arrow going down like this. This is the resultant vector. And circle that as your answer. So anytime you see subtraction of vectors, what you have to do is add, but when you add, you flip around the direction, keeping the exact same orientation and direction, uh, or, or I guess I should say the angle stays the same and the length stays the same. You just change it around as far as which, which, which side the arrow has. So let's do another more complicated example. Let's say you have, and this will be it because we're not going to spend too much time on this because it's a pretty simple idea. Let's say we have vector f1, and we're going to subtract from that vector another vector which goes up and down. We're going to call this vector f2. And then to that, we're going to add another vector, and that's going to be an angled vector down. We're going to call that f3. And then from that, we're going to subtract another vector. This one's going to be going down to the right. We're going to call this vector f4. So obviously, we're doing some addition in here, right, like this. But we're also doing some subtraction. So it's this minus this plus this minus this. Okay. So how do we handle it? What we're going to do is we're going to transform this problem into the following thing. F1 stays exactly the same because he didn't, he didn't do anything wrong, for lack of a better word. This subtraction is going to be changed into addition. But in order to do that, we got to flip this guy around. So he's going to be down, oriented down. But he's not F2 anymore. We, he's really negative F2. That's what we're adding to it to make the subtraction happen. And then we add to this guy, this guy hadn't done anything wrong, he's still a positive vector, f3, so he stays exactly the same. But this subtraction is going to change into addition. But in order to do that, we have to fix the vector. He's going to be angled exactly the same, but flipped around. He's no longer f4, he's negative f4. Like this. So you see now all of your subtraction uh, problems have turned into addition problems. Like this. 
So then we're just going to do the addition exactly the same way as we always have. So what we're going to have is f1, like this. And we're going to add to this vector here, which is now going to be going down. And just to kind of help you remember what it is, it's negative f2. But it doesn't matter, you just kind of keep the arrow there. Then we're going to add to that f3, which is angled this direction. And we're going to add to that f4, which goes up like this, but it's actually not f4, we, we call it negative f4. And it just reminds you that you had some subtractions here, but really what's happening is you're adding all of these vectors. So then you take the tail of this guy directly to the head of the other guy, and then this purple vector is called the resultant vector. So the answer to the question, what is the vector sub addition and subtraction of all those vectors, is just the, perf the purple vector, which is this long, angled this direction. That's the resultant. There you go. So vector subtraction is really a piece of cake once you understand addition. All you do is you change the subtraction signs to addition signs, and then you, in order to, to negate the vector, the length is the same, the orientation, the angle is the same, but you just flip it exactly pointed the other way, just like we did with numbers, effectively. And then you add everything exactly as we've done before. Now that you understand addition and subtraction of vectors, next section we're going to multiply a vector by a number, which means multiply by a scalar. Very, very simple concept. Follow me on, we'll co cover that right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.